Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. This is um, lecture uh, 20 where we'll begin to discuss uh, atomic structure and the, some initial experiments which led to the initial pictures of an atom um, as uh, basically as we know it today. Let's start by what was known at the turn of the 20th century. Um, in 1897, uh, Joseph John Thompson, J.J. Thompson, discovered the electron, and uh, he started uh, pretty soon after that to develop a model for the atom. Um, and this, at least later on, was sort of termed the plum pudding model, where, um, and it, it kind of uh, conceptually looks like this. You have a you have some sort of diffuse positive charge, which is the pudding, and um, and then you have small negatively charged electrons, which are kind of embedded in maybe some ring structure, um, some layered structure in the um, in the pudding, and uh, the whole thing together is is neutral, uh, electrically neutral, but. Uh, but the only just sort of discrete charges in this model are the electrons, which I guess again are embedded in this diffuse positive pudding. Okay, and this model was basic was based on um, what was known about the at, about atoms at the time, namely that they contain electrons, negatively charged electrons, and that those electrons are in fact much much lighter than um, than the atoms. Um, that the atoms again are neutrally charged. Um, you could test that by putting them in a some, somehow using an electric field and and showing that you don't get um, kind of a net force on the on an atom, um, <clears throat> and also that atoms are very very small, and they had already uh, so for example if you took 12 grams of carbon, the uh, that's equal to six times ten to the third six times ten to the twenty third atoms that's Avogadro's principle. Okay. And they knew at the time that um, that diamond was made out of carbon, and they knew the density of diamond to be 3.5 grams per cubic centimeter. And so you can basically, if you divide, <clears throat> if you work it out, you can find that the volume of a, of a carbon atom in diamond is about 5.7 times 10 to the minus 24th cubic centimeters. And and then that implies a diameter for for a carbon atom of something about 0.2 nanometers, okay, two about two angstroms, and so atoms are very very small, okay, and they could they could already sort of intuit that or, or um, um, guess that have an educated guess at that from these kinds of calculations, okay, so these these this so the plum pudding model was sort of the pre prevailing model at the time. It was still very early on in the game, uh, and so people were interested in testing this model and determining whether it, it um, held up against experimental data. Okay, and so um, one person that was doing that was uh, Ernest Rutherford at University of Manchester. So he and a and a, and a couple of students, Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden, um, were studying radioactivity of uranium, and basically they noticed that. That um, three different kinds of three different types of radiation were emitted uh, from uranium: uh, alpha, what they called, what they termed alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Um, they Rutherford realized that they realized sort of pretty readily that alpha particles were in fact twice ionized um, helium atoms, and they they basically um, uh, did this by uh, letting them accumulate in a glass tube uh, through which they through which they uh, ran an electric discharge to record the characteristic like spectrum um, and then that resulted in fluorescence so they did some experiments to sort of determine that alpha particles were in fact twice ionized helium atoms and at that point Rutherford realized that he may be able to use these alpha particles to probe the structure of an atom 